Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University, and I'd like to take just 10 minutes or so to talk about ACATs. Now, when I say ACAT, I am not talking about that. So, what do I mean when I say ACAT? Well, ACAT stands for Acquisition Category. It's the category that your program is in, in terms of oversight and review. So let's take a look at what that says. Uh, it really does determine who's going to be your milestone decision authority and what level of scrutiny and oversight you're going to get. It's mostly based on dollars, but just plain interest and uh, the level that Congress might look at in terms of how interested they are in you might count as well as far as what acquisition category you end up in. So let's talk about which ones there actually are. We've got several different levels. Your biggest programs are going to be acquisition category one. Your major defense acquisition programs are acquisition category one. Your major systems are acquisition category two. They're slightly smaller, uh, but still very important systems. Your smallest programs are going to be in acquisition category three or four, depending on how small they actually are and whether you were in the Marine Corps, Army, uh, or Navy, which is, those are the only services that actually use an acquisition category four. Okay, so let's talk about how we end up as a program in each of these categories. But first, we gotta take a look at what type of system are you? Okay, you have two different uh, designations here. So one is weapon systems. So that's pretty easy to understand in terms of like your F-22 is a weapon system, but also it's a pretty big bucket because things like power generation systems are also considered weapon systems. So most of our acquisition systems are going to fit into that Western weapon system designation. However, there are systems whose lot in life is to deal with information or whose purpose is to deal with information. And those are our automated information systems. That's the, the other designation here. So things like your defense travel system or command and control systems like DJC2 would fit into the automated information system designation. And they have different rules in terms of the amount of money and that kind of thing. And we'll talk about each of these buckets here as we go forward. So let's look at the money levels that would put you in acquisition category one. Again, these are your major defense acquisition programs, or MDAPs. You probably heard that acronym. If you are spending $480 million in RDT&E, or Research Development Test and Evaluation dollars, in other words, to develop your system, then you're going to be in Acquisition Category 1 system. If you are spending $2.79 billion or more in order to procure your systems, then that is also going to put you in an Acquisition Category 1 uh, category. So there are also divisions within the ACAT 1 designation, and the default position now for any program that's going to have its milestone A October of 2016 or after uh, is going to be, by default, an ACAT 1B program, and that's the middle one that we have here. These are going to be managed by the services at the service acquisition executive level for milestone decisions. And that is pretty much what most programs going into the future um, that fit the ACAT 1 program are going to be. However, there will be exceptions that need to be managed at the DOD level. And the exceptions are defined in the law, and one of those is joint programs, for instance. You can understand why a program like the Joint Strike Fighter, we would want that managed at the DOD level so that we have all the service interests that are considered and it's looked at from an enterprise view. Uh, but that is going to be the exception rather than the rule going into the future that the Defense Acquisition Executive will be the Milestone Decision Authority and you'll be designated as an ACAT 1D program if that's the case. Um, Legacy-wise, there's lots of ACAT 1C programs that the Defense Acquisition Executive delegated to the component or the service. And the only difference there between component and service is the services are the armed services, in other words, your Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps. And then the components are other agencies uh, within the, the Department of Defense that have a, a component acquisition executive, like the Special Operations Command, for instance. Okay, so basically same rules apply for an ACAT 1C as an ACAT 1B in terms of your scrutiny level, your component, or your service acquisition executive is going to be the milestone decision authority for those programs. 
So let's look at some smaller programs here. ACAT2 also has dollar figures associated with it, in this case for development, $185 million, or for procurement, $835 million. ACAT3s are anything that fall below that. So the ACAT2 is kind of in between there, the dollar figures here and the dollar figures that we saw for ACAT1 programs. And then for ACAT3s, anything that falls below that. Um, specially designated uh, ACAT4s by the Marine Corps again, the Navy and the Army, uh, can be designated down as far as program manager level for the Milestone Decision Authority, and typically that would be a program manager that has a portfolio of very small programs. Some of those very small programs may be delegated all the way down to program manager level for the Milestone Decision Authority in the ACAT 4 case. Generally speaking, for ACAT 2s, that's going to be your component acquisition executive or your service acquisition executive. That's your Milestone Decision Authority. For ACAT 3s, they can also retain those as the Milestone Decision Authority at their level, or they can designate that down, could be to the program executive officer level, uh, possibly for an ACAT 3 program. So these are kind of the smaller programs. Again, ACAT 2 has its own dollar figure designations. ACAT 3 and 4, those are the programs that fall below even the dollar figures uh, for ACAT 2s. Okay, automated information systems have different rules. So the dollar figures for them are based on an annual basis first. So 40 million or more annually, if you're going to spend that on an automated information system, you're an ACAT 1. If you're going to spend $165 million from the material solution analysis phase through deployment of the system, then that is going to put you in the ACAT1 category. And if your overall life cycle cost from cradle to grave is $520 million or more, you're also in the ACAT1 category. So ACAT1s have two different designations, and it's kind of like um, your weapon systems in that at the top level you're being managed by DOD. Your milestone decision authority is the defense acquisition executive. So um, they can also designate or delegate that down to the component or service level. So if, you, if that happens, you go from an ACAT 1AM to an ACAT 1AC, C for component. So the, the component level programs will be managed by the head of the component. And that would be, for instance, your secretary of the Air Force, but they generally will delegate that down to their component acquisition executive. There is no ACAT 2 level for these because if you were in the ACAT 2 level as far as dollar figures goes, you're actually in ACAT 1. Um, so ACAT 3 is anything that falls below these dollar figures, and there's no ACAT 4 for automated information systems at this time. There are some serious wrinkles to this. Just because you fall below these dollar figures doesn't mean you necessarily stay at a lower level like an ACAT 2 or an ACAT 3. So what might bring you up to a higher level? Well, the Defense Acquisition Executive can always designate a program as a higher acquisition category based on the interest, uh, either at DOD or congressional level. Or if you are, in some cases, spending a lot of money on an information technology services program, they will decide that's important enough that they want that to be treated as a major defense acquisition program. And lastly, any of your automated information systems there, um, if they're a CAT1, they can be designated as a major defense acquisition program as well if the defense acquisition executive decides they should be managed at that level. Okay, so that's the overview, but I also have a couple of sources for more information. You can go out to the 5000.02, find that on our website, uh, or you can go to a tool we have called the Milestone Documentation Identification Tool. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up for you. This tool is great. It allows you to rack and stack your program by your acquisition category and what decision you're about to go through. And once you've done that, it determines which documents you need for that particular decision. So let's just say I'm an ACAT 3 program and I want to filter that by the material development decision here. I allow that to crank through and it's going to tell me which ones of the documents 
in the acquisition system I have to have for material development decisions. So you can see I only have four here, and one of them is my acquisition decision memorandum, and then it's going to give me a description of what that is, and also some links to further information about that. So this is a great tool for determining what it is you've got to have for your next decision point, and also um, to rack and stack it so that you're not getting the other acquisition categories requirements for documents. So this has just been a quick overview of acquisition categories. Hope it's been helpful and thank you for watching.